So let's talk about how we fix the obesity, how mm -hmm. we burn fat mm. and how we all get into a healthy weight. Now, I know you think that BMIs are largely bullshit and unhelpful. Is that an accurate description of your opinion? Okay, look, before I, I, I don't want to end up um, with my colleagues throwing shoes at me. So I, I think, <laughs> so, so BMI, for, for those of you who, who don't know, BMI is obviously um, your weight in kilograms divided by your height in meter square. It's a, it's a way of controlling for your height and your weight. Um, now, on a population level, okay, it is actually remarkably effective. Why? Because A, it's free to measure. It doesn't cost anything. Um, and on average in a population, sadly, um, the higher your BMI, the more fat you carry. And we know that the more fat you carry, the more likely you are to be unhealthy. Okay, On a population, on a population level, all this is true. You might argue rugby players, different this, and this is, this is true. On an individual level, however... It is not particularly useful for 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 your for your health, other than tracking your weight. It's about as useful as as that, because each of us are different shapes, different sizes, can carry different amounts of fat, uh, can carry different amounts of fat safely. So so that is the problem with uh, um, with, with with obesity, right? It's it depends on who you are, um, how heavy is heavy before it actually be begins to actually influence your influence your health. So let's talk about food a little bit. Mm. Um, I'm currently doing some kind of version of intermittent fasting, right? D detail, details, what, well, some I kind of version. Well, I just don't, let's call it time restricted eating. Oh, okay. Yep, right. You know, um, basically I don't, I don't have breakfast. I actually don't really get hungry at breakfast, to be completely honest with you. I tend to get hungry a bit later in the day. So I haven't eaten anything today. And God forbid, uh, it's 3.30 p.m. Um, wow. I know, but I just don't I just don't seem to get hungry yet. Okay. Um, and then I read your book. And in chapter three of Gene Eating, you talk about front loading your food in the day. Now I was like, Ugh, fucking hell. You know, I'm trying my best here, Giles. And they told me <laughs> to eat later in the day, to skip breakfast, we don't need it. And then to time restrict your eating. And then I read your book and then it says, front load your food, have a big breakfast, medium lunch, small dinner. What's the truth? Okay, so so that is the, I mean, I think most societies have a similar saying. The Chinese have a similar saying uh, as, as this as well. So um, a, a couple of things. I What think saying? Eat like a king at breakfast, a prince, a prince at lunch, and a pauper at um, at, at dinner time. And so the Chinese have have a similar have a similar saying because I think people kind of work this out. Now, there is some truth to this, but then I'll come back and explain what the truth what the truth is. So the some truth is that actually, clearly, we are metabolically our metabolism is highest during the day because we have to avoid becoming food and we have to look for food. Okay, so so, so that's the thing. Whereas at night when we're asleep, our metabolism drops. So if you eat your biggest meal at night, and then a couple of hours later you go to sleep, then clearly you are you are loading your calories and then going to sleep, which is in storage mode. Whereas if you eat your biggest meal during the day, you have the whole day left in order to burn it. Now, homeostasis, it does balance itself out. So it's not the driver of obesity, but undoubtedly it will make a little bit of a difference there. Okay. But then a friend of mine, um, uh, Alex Johnstone, Alexandra Johnstone, Professor Alexander Don Johnstone, up at the Rowett Institute in, in Aberdeen, just published a study, I think probably only three months ago, okay, which was very interesting. So what she did was she got um, people, um, a, a cohort of people, and got them to eat exactly the same number of calories. They supplied the food, so they knew what they were going to do. Okay? And they did it either by front-loading all the calories at, at breakfast or backloading all the calories at dinner, but everyone ate exactly the same thing, and then everyone then swapped. Okay, so everyone did the whole, did the whole thing, and what she found was that there was no difference in body weight change, whether or not you were eating most of your calories at breakfast or most of your calories at dinner. It was the total amount of energy during the day, but the difference was if you ate more at breakfast you felt less hungry during the day than you if you ate more at dinner. So while if you ate exactly the same foods, but at breakfast or dinner, dinner or lunch, it doesn't actually matter. But for some people, it may very well be easier to have the big breakfast because it means, particularly if they love food in particular, because it means they get less hungry throughout the day. So that is the truth. That is the nuance. But does that mean 
you know, I've got a firsthand experience in this, that if I'm not hungry throughout the day, then when it gets to midnight, I'll be thinking, hmm. No, but it doesn't matter, right? Because because it's not like, it's not like, well, it depends. Depends how much. If you suddenly ate 3,000 calories at dinner, then 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 maybe there are- No, I'm not talking dinner. I'm talking midnight <laughs> snack. <laughs> So I, the, I think the reality, the, the, the reality is you have to eat when you have to eat, uh, uh, is 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 the answer. Now, if you were trying to lose weight, so if you were actively trying to lose weight because you are active, because if one was actively overweight, then you might begin to think about when you wanted to eat more. I would probably cut the calories from your dinner rather than the cutting the calories from your breakfast. But if you are surviving during the day, and this is true about many people, right? Nurses, doctors who work shifts, firemen, police, police officers, whatever they do, you got to eat when you got to eat. So these, a lot of these um, pieces of advice are fine until they smack into the reality of life, your job, and what you actually and what you actually do. But as general mm. advice for the gen general person who mm. isn't constrained by night shifts or anything like that, mm. eating late, closer to when you fall asleep, is bad. Is not going to help you lose weight. Correct. Okay, that's that is good correct. To know. Everyone says this, you know. Tim, Tim Spector <laughs> said this to me. I need I need people to keep saying it, and then I will cancel the midnight buffet. <laughs> Um, but I love my midnight buffet too. <laughs> yeah, I know. But every so often only, not every night. Yeah, yeah, not all the time, <laughs> you know, five nights a week. Um, keto, mm. your general stance on keto, you know, m much of your f feedback and much of your writing is more about how it's unsustainable. Um, is, that, is that accurate? Well, it depends. So, so the original keto diet, keto in its original form, was oddly enough, it was designed for epilepsy. Okay, that was what it was originally designed to do. It's only in its most, I would say the past 10 years, that suddenly people have realized there was a weight loss element to it, as you as you personally firsthand uh, actually mm -hmm. found it. So I think the original versions of keto were actually very, very, very unsustainable because of the really super high levels of fat uh, um, that, that were involved. They were unpalatable and, 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 and with absolutely almost zero carbs they were very unpalatable they they're difficult to stick to if you have inflammation related diseases is, is keto often a diet that's recommended if there's like inflammation related depends it depends where the inflammation is so okay. so so if it's inflammation in the gut you need a different type of diet is so so that there is no one for a given inflammation right. so it, it then it depends on on the diet that you're actually actually on but keto in its extreme form is difficult to stick to because you know because of the really really high fat to, to protein ratio so it was designed for epilepsy because I think there was some reason to, to say that when you force your brain to use ketones, which is um, rather than glucose, um, which is where the keto diet comes from, it reduces the incidence of epilepsy. So leave that aside. But what then people found as well is that with the keto diet, you ended up feeling fuller. And so more satiated, and so therefore you lost weight because you ended up eating eating less weight. Uh, sorry, eating less food, but also because you were having less carbs, mm. then it was easier to control your blood glucose. So keto, I think, is probably good, um, uh, safe thing for some type two diabetics looking to try and a milder form of keto because now there's different types of keto um, that you can stick to to try and cont control your blood glucose if you're type two di diabetic. Just make sure you don't eat as much of the fat as animal fat, try and have more olive oil and fish fat and vegetable fat rather than animal fat, then there probably is a case to be made for for for, for keto not as extreme. For a healthy uh, uh, individual such as yourself, you found how difficult it was to actually stick to it. I think there's probably a case to be made for introducing a little bit of carbohydrates, but high fiber carbohydrates in there so that it makes it more sustainable. The issue is, and I think one needs to be careful, is certainly in its most extreme forms, there haven't been many studies looking at the safety, say over five, 10 years, if you stick to keto all the time, how healthy is it for you? And so that's the only um, caveat that I want that I want to point out. The studies need to be done. As it becomes more popular, the studies will be done because there are many people, millions of people who swear by keto. And, um, and inherently, as long as you don't eat too much animal fat only, and so you have vegetable fat and fish fat and um, olive oil and things as well, then it can be relatively healthy. You referenced there that um, the protein makes you feel fuller. Mm -hmm. 
that's that, that seems to be a really important point that if you have a high protein diet you're going, going to end up eating less which will result in weight loss right mm -hmm. in what order does like protein fats and carbohydrates make you feel fullest so a calorie of protein makes you feel fuller than a calorie of fat than a calorie of carbohydrate in that order so mm. and and the reason behind that is because protein is chemically the most complex compared to fat and carbs so, so it takes the longest to A, digest and B, metabolize. So, and because it takes the longest, any food which travels further down the gut makes you feel fuller. That's just a general, it's a, it's a general um, um, thing of how, how, your, how our body works. So that's the first thing. So protein takes longer to digest, travels further down the gut, you feel fuller. But then not only that, protein gets digested into amino acids. Amino acids transfer across the gut wall into our blood and they again go to our cells and organs where they then metabolize. Now, during the metabolism stage, it then takes a lot of energy to metabolize protein compared to fat and carbs. So for example, for every 100 calories of protein that you eat, we are only ever able to use 70 calories. So 30% of the protein calories we eat are spent dealing with protein. It takes money to make money, right? And so at 30%. So protein calories everywhere. This is not reflected on the side of the package. Protein calories everywhere are 30% wrong. Just off, just, just, just off the bat. Because of the amount of energy it actually takes to sort out to sort out protein. That's another reason why it makes you feel fuller. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.